G'day, I'm Woz. And I'm Nick, sometimes Coxie, mostly Nick. This is the Tradies in Business podcast, and we're here to share a bunch of tips, ideas, tactics that you can put in place to get change happening in your trade business right now. If you're really lucky, we're going to entertain you with a few mum jokes, and more importantly, a bunch of fantastic guests that will educate you in all things you need to know about trade business, but we do promise to do it with a whole bunch of fun along the way. I'm a self-confessed idiot, so strap yourself in and enjoy another episode. Hey. G'day. How's it going? I'm not good at it when I'm thinking about it. It's just one of those things that's got to be off the cuff. <laughs> what, going or being ocker? Being ocker. I'm not very good at it <laughs> on the regular. Oh, it comes very naturally to me, Coxie. Well, you do live in Tasmania, so what I would anticipate that it would just roll off the tongue and it's actually the opposite for you and you have to concentrate really hard to speak with Queen's English. I have to pretend to be professional, Nicole. I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting how we slip in and out of different uh, tones, and I don't think it's being disingenuous. No. Which is a fancy way of saying being a fake. <clears throat> so and so. Well, this is an uh, explicit edit episode. Can you not just swear straight up off the bat? Oh, end? I'm not going to use. I, I don't care how how many e's we put on the episode. I just I don't feel comfortable using that particular word ever. <laughs> Good. Not even for ocker old Tasmanian living was. Well, not on, on air anyway. Perhaps off air. No, not not in public where someone can use it against me <laughs> in social media. Anyway. Uh, hello listeners. This is, um, a fuck it Friday episode and we haven't done one for a long time, Nick. We're back. We're back. Aren't you glad listeners? So as part of the, uh, well, I guess we call it a revamp. Maybe it's a respray. I got a respray on my, on my old 80 series cruiser a while back doing a bit of a mini resto. Maybe this is a mini resto on the podcast. It's our 10th year after all. I love it when you try to talk in hip young language, Warwick. It really suits you. No, it's it's not hip young language. It's just talking the way I talk. Actually, I'm not trying to be cool. I don't waste my time with that shit. There's nothing cool about me. Uh, so anyway, we've tarted this uh, this show up a little bit. And one of the things that we're doing is we're bringing back the Fuck It Fridays. So welcome back, Fridays, where Coxie and I just talk a bit of shit, have a bit of a rant. Uh, maybe throw the spotlight onto something that's pissing us off or maybe pissing our listeners off or our mm. clients. Mm. And um, sometimes we even, oh, we probably hang a bit of shit on particular categories of people that we think need a, a bit of a coach slap, a loving coach slap sort of. Maybe it's just more of a slap and less love. <laughs> mm. Got to be careful with that topic, don't I? Yes, you do. Um, really I, take yourself into the grey. <laughs> oh, nice double entendre. <laughs> Good work, Coxie. Thank you. I'm just going to hand over to you, mate. Well, I did have a direction for this rant today, but I'm sitting here and I've changed my mind, actually. I was thinking what? back. What? How week. am I supposed to keep up if you change your mind? You'll be fine. You'll catch on real quick. I, oh, I was thinking over my week. I've had an interesting week. It's our second big week back. We've been working behind the scenes, but this is our second uh, client facing week, if you like. And I was thinking about tradies in general and, and just some of the stuff you and I have been working on behind the scenes and have been working on for years behind the scenes. And one thing really pissed me off this week, and that was the continued negative narrative around tradies. There was a, a, a current affair or something were advertising this story. They were going to run around a handyman. And a handyman. A handyman. And how the handyman had... I think I look, I didn't watch it, so I can't clearly give you the whole story because it got shitty and I decided I wasn't going to even give my time or my ratings to that particular channel. But they were talking about this negative story and it wasn't just it wasn't just a person and the person's done something wrong. It was a handyman, a tradie. That's what they led with with the whole story. Yep. I was so pissed off to think we don't talk about the bloody service station attendant who went and robbed a bank or we don't talk about the teacher that didn't pay the tradie or we don't talk about the doctor who did some other unrelated thing. It, it seems to be 
always when we are talking about tradies, if they ever wear high vis or there's any opportunity to slap them up and brand them as a tradie in the media, it's going to be with a negative narrative. Now, the converse of that was last night I did see there was a story about a couple of tradies who helped rescue a man out of the flood border over on Bribey Island. I didn't even know there were floods on Bribey. Sorry, Bribey. But during the Christmas period, we had a lot of rain here in Brisbane and over on Bribey Island, there was a flood and there was a gentleman who didn't have a voice. So he couldn't scream for help or call out for help. And a couple of tradies went and swam out into the flood water and rescued this man and got him to safety. Quite an elderly gentleman. And they said tradie twice. In the whole freaking story, they said tradie twice. Now, to their credit, they did intrude, um, intr- and what's the word? I'm so pissed off, I can't even remember my words. But it- <laughs> You're really wound up. I am wound up. They did interview the tradies, and so the tradie was very, very smart here, and he stood so that behind him in the background there was the ute with all his branding on it, which I thought was very, very clever. <laughs> and they were wearing their uniforms so you could see the name of the business. However... The interviewer wasn't talking about the generous nature of tradies. I mean, how often do you hear of a great news story where a tradie has jumped in to help? We have a whole national day where tradies all give up their their labour and organise yeah. materials to help people out, but we don't hear about this stuff. We only hear about the freaking handyman who's gone on to do something wrong instead of the person that did something wrong. There you go. I did get a little ranty. It really pissed me off. You okay. I am now. I got it out. Prosecco. (sighs) That would be really nice, actually, but it's very. (laughs) It's Friday. It's never too early, Coxie. Perhaps we should start doing these episodes half cut. If you had a whiskey, you were very funny after two whiskeys. It's got to be two. But after two, you do the dab, you dance on stage, you sing. (laughs) You're pretty funny after a couple. I think that would be a great episode. The real was coming out. Do you know the only other. Thing that brings out the real me or the inner me, my inner child, is my son. Ah, yes. Well, like you would hanging expect. around my son. Yeah. I've really noticed that. It's just I've started being silly and I sing and all sorts of stuff. And my wife thinks it's amazing. She loves it. But it doesn't happen in public. No way. Nah. Why not? Not going to happen. Do you know why? Because I'm worried that the media are going to fucking video camera me and say, <laughs> look at this tradie being a dickhead in public and scaring small children. <laughs> I decided to give up wearing uh, high fees just in case somebody records me doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Well, I used to wear mine down the street, but people kept looking at me weird, especially when I was just buying groceries. <laughs> That's how desperately I want to be a tradie. <laughs> I want to be on television in trouble as a tradie, just so I can say I was a tradie. No, you can't. Anyway, that. we're only contributing I'm not, more. I'm not going to bring up my mummy daddy issues here on the show. Probably a good idea, especially on a Friday. Nobody wants so, to. So, Nick, I I think. Uh, well, look, I don't know. I'm. I don't disagree with you because that would be a shit idea. Um, but <laughs> but. And look, this is really subjective. You know what I think the media does a really great job of, and that is labeling people mm. to suit a narrative. And I reckon that's what's going on here. And it's a really, it's a really easy narrative for them to lean into. And they've been doing it for years because I guess it's, it's one of those stereotypes, you know, they like to stereotype, um, you know, rich wankers, in their fancy cars, you know, chasing the real estate mm. um, tycoon down the road in their seven series BMW and the tinted window. So like, have you got any comment? Have you got any comment? And the person drives off and they just make this big thing out of labeling people yeah. instead of exactly as you say, they're just people. A, a human being did something shit or a human being did something awesome. But we just, we can't do that. We seem to have this, well, the media have this thing, and it happened hugely during COVID. We saw it. It was awful. It was disgusting, the labelling and the divisiveness that was powered by the media, and I won't go into where I think all that comes from. Just move on, Warwick. Just move on, Was Just keep keep going, buddy. Just drive on by. Oh. Um, 
So I, I think you're right, Nick. It's one of those really old, persistent narratives. They obviously get mileage out of it. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep doing it. Mm, um, and it just really sucks that tradies, which honestly is such a dumb uh, stereotype to be peddling like that in the media as a negative thing, because it could be anything from a 21-year-old employee, um, you know, construction site worker carrying scaffolding and buckets of, you know, mortar around through to the the husband and wife who own a $5 million a year plumbing business in Sydney that employs 15 people and feeds a hundred families. And, you know, like they're all tradies mm. and everything in between. It's just, mm. it's just this weird, really broad category that they just love to freaking roll out. Anyway, I didn't say anything useful other than to kind of agree with you. Well, I don't think anything, any of this is useful. I think it's just our opportunity <laughs> yeah, that we get frustrated too, that you're not alone, that it's these things rant. really piss us off and a big part and a big, well, it's a big focus of why we do what we do and it's a big focus for us to try and push to get positive media for trades in one form or another, mm. whether it's through the awards or it's through helping trade businesses improve their processes so they can't be accused of being a shit tradie or whether it's through helping improve the the family lives of trade business owners so that they're able to give back and contribute to the community through spending time with their children, through their sports or their school or what have you. Um, that's mm. a big focus. It's one of our big values. It's why we do or one of the reasons why we do what we do. And so when we see it go the other way, it does piss us off. You're not alone. You're not the only one that sees that stuff and thinks this is bullshit. Why do I have to be tarred with that? You're not like that. Most trade business owners are straight up citizens. They're working really friggin' hard for their families. They work incredibly long hours. They're doing everything they can to make a buck so that their families can have a good life. And I don't feel that that's overly acknowledged the way it should be. Instead, we just, you know, even think about when you go to the pub or a barbecue and you catch up with mates or worse still, a freaking community group on Facebook where everybody wants, I just want to find an electrician that won't charge me an arm and a leg, but they've got to be reputable and they've got to have a license. They've got to be in business for a while and they've got to be good. And they need to come out in the next half an hour oh. because it's urgent. <laughs> and those Maybe same pricks don't things. pay their bill. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's shocking. So this is really an episode about stereotypes, Nicole. Yes, it is. And and labels. Very much so. Do you Maybe. know the solution? No. Well, no, no. It's not the solution. Do you know what my solution is to this problem? You don't consume any media at all. I don't watch the news. I yeah. consume I consume actually quite a lot of media. I have just created such a narrow um, bandwidth of what gets onto my feed. Like I have put a lot of effort into removing stuff, blocking accounts, telling the social media um, platforms that I don't want to see this stuff. I don't want to see these ads. I don't want to see this content. And you could call me a wowser if you, if you didn't know better. Um, but I just don't want that shit getting in my head. Mm. I don't mind coming on here and seeing you get all wound up about it because that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there and, run away. <laughs> <laughs> and there's plenty of things that I get pissed off about and my poor wife oh my gosh she is such a saint um no wonder my previous marriage didn't work out she just she was probably I don't know just had a lower tolerance for my shit <laughs> but uh <laughs> but I ha I just don't I don't consume things that uh going to poke my bear. I was just thinking about how that was going to sound when I said it. It went okay. Um, it's all right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I just, I try and, and not look at things that are just fucking stupid mm. um, because I'm just going to get angry. There's stuff all I can do about it. The media are going to keep doing what they do because you know what? People sit and watch it and believe it and behave, uh, take actions based on that. And that just serves one mob of people and that's big fucking media companies. So mm. that's my thoughts on the, on the matter, Nick. Stop watching the news, mate. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> just an ad. I didn't watch it. It was just an ad. But, you know, when I'm hanging around waiting for maths to come on, I need to 
consume all the oh my gosh that, that's the next that's the next fucking friday i'm gonna go on a rant about bullshit reality tv and how it's poisoning society there you go there's my oh, next, next episode if you want me to if you want to hear me go on a rant about reality tv drop us a facebook message drop a comment whatever you like just reach out to us somehow if we get enough votes i will rant hard on My, reality yeah. TV. Uh, that episode solo. But I was going to say very similar. If there's something that's pissing you off and you'd like us to talk about it, you know how to find us. You can hit us up via the website. There's a contact button. You can hit us up on our socials. We both have plenty of accounts you could find us on. We'd love your suggestion on what to talk about. These are coming back this year as a regular Friday episode where we get all cranky and ranty about something. Rarely will they be educational. Mostly they will be quite simply our opinions and that's it. Um, yes, so, all opinion. Yep. Hopefully you enjoyed yeah, as much as we that. enjoyed getting it out there and moving on. <laughs> Thanks for ranting with us. Have a fantastic Friday. Hooroo. Hooroo.